everyone and welcome. Thank you all so much for joining us today for this live stream event. My name is Alexia and I am the project manager of the Microsoft Reactor Toronto. Before we begin, I'd like to quickly review two items with you, our code of conduct and our, our event guidelines. First, um, our code of conduct. Um, Microsoft seeks for a respectful environment for both our audience and presenter. We encourage engagement in the chat, but please be mindful of your commentary. Remain professional and on topic. Secondly, our event guidelines. This session is recorded and will be available on demand through our Microsoft Reactor channel, YouTube channel in about 48 to 72 hours. I will later share the link in the chat for our YouTube channel. If you've not been on a live stream on YouTube before, please note that you must create an account on YouTube to have access and interact in the chat. You can set that up now. And if you're unable to use the chat but have questions, please feel free to reach out to us on our social media or on Meetup. Which brings us to today's session, um, Learn Power Apps by Creating a Word Game. We are live today with our wonderful speaker, April, which I'm going to introduce right here. Hi, April. Hi. Thank you for joining us. How are hey, you? Thanks for having me. I'm doing great. Excited to be here. Fantastic, for sure. Well, I'm going to leave the floor up to you now. Everybody's super excited for the session. Let's, uh, let's begin. Thank you. Thanks so much. So super excited to be here today. Uh, I'll just introduce myself really quickly. My name is April Dunham, and I'm a Power Platform Developer Advocate at Microsoft. So I love the Power Platform and low-code technology, and I come from a development background. Um, really excited for the topic that I have today, and that's how we can learn Power Apps by creating a Wordle game. So maybe we can all do a virtual show of hands here to ourselves, like how many of us have been obsessed like I am with the Wordle game. So you might have heard of it. It's kind of all over Twitter and it's really the rage. So it's a simple game where you try to guess a five letter word and you have six tries to do that. So they encourage you to share your score on Twitter and you can see visually uh, who's guessed the word and how many tries it took and all that. And it's just a really fun game. And part of the mystique and mystery of it is you only get one word to guess a day. So it keeps it like a fun thing that you can do every day. It's a really cool game. I kind of got obsessed with it. So I went down the rabbit hole of seeing how I could recreate this type of game inside of Power Apps, which is our low code application development tool inside of the Power Platform. So I thought this would be really great to show how we can actually take a concept like how can I build a game similar to Wordle in Power Apps and use that to learn Power Apps. So A, if you love Wordle and similar games, and B, if you haven't really went down the path of getting into Power Apps yet and you're wondering how to get started and what some of the basic concepts are, then this is a great session for you. That's what we're going to show. And along the way, if you have any questions that come up, please put those in the chat and I'm going to answer them as we go along. So let's get started. What are the steps that we need to follow to be able to create a Wordle-like game inside of Power Apps? Well, the first thing that we're gonna cover is how we can get a development environment, if you don't already have one, to start creating Power Apps. We're gonna walk through choosing an app type, selecting your form factor, picking a database, building out the user experience and user interface, defining our logic with something called PowerFX, which I'll explain what that is, and finally, how we test, share, and distribute our brand new Wordle Power App. So let's dive into each of these steps. First up, how do we get a development environment? So the Power Apps and the Power Platform is part of Microsoft 365. So if you have Microsoft 365 in your organization, there's a chance that you might already have access to Power Apps. But what if you don't have that, or maybe you just want uh, your own environment, your own place where you can test building out apps and see if it's something that you like and that you would find useful? Well, we offer the Power Apps developer plan where you can create that and get started building applications. So what it gives you is access to all of our data sources. It gives you access to the Power Platform's database and common data model called Dataverse, where we can actually store data that we want to consume with inside of our applications in. And it gives you the ability to not only build Power Apps, but use 
the Power Platform technologies like Power Automate to add workflows, um, Power Virtual Agents, and all of that. So how we get started with that is we're going to go to aka.ms forward slash Power Apps Dev Plan, and that will take you here to the Power Apps Developer Plan page. So there are a couple ways that we can get started with this. Now, as I mentioned, if you already have access to a Microsoft 365 environment, then we can actually add this on, this Power Apps Developer Plan, to your existing Microsoft 365 environment. And what it will do is you'll see when I log into my environment here, and I'm going to go back actually to my Officer 65, and we're going to go to Power Apps. And it gives you a special environment for testing. So environments in the Power Platform, if we look here in the upper right-hand corner, we see this tab that says environments, and that's the name of my tenant. And when I click that, we see all of the other environments that we have. Now, this one called April's environment is the environment that I got as part of the Power Apps developer plan. So this is a free environment for me to do, test all the premium features that Power Apps has to offer in the Power Platform and use that for my personal development and testing and all that and learning. So I'll get this environment created and add it on. And all an environment is in the Power Platform is a logical security and data boundary. So if you have happened to use SharePoint, for example, this is kind of equivalent of a site collection where you can have different sites and users that have access to the sites in different lists and libraries. Or maybe if you use Excel, this could be kind of like your own um, Excel workbook where you could have multiple tabs and different things and data. So that's what we get with this Power Apps Developer Plan. So if you already have a Microsoft 365 account, you'll choose this option for existing user and it will create that environment for you. If you don't, you can select the Get Started for free and what you can do is combine the Power Apps Developer Plan with the Microsoft 365 Developer Plan to get a fully functional development environment that gives you uh, access to Microsoft 365. So that's Outlook, SharePoint, and all of the tools and Teams and all of that plus the Power Apps environment that we see here. So that's what you'll want to do to get started if you don't already have access to the Power Platform and you want to start developing. Once we have that, we're ready to go and start building our application. So if we look at the steps here, and we go back, there we go to the presentation quickly. So we have our developer plan set up. Now we need to talk about the types of applications. So if we haven't looked at Wordle before, um, let's take a look and just see what it looks like here. So if we look for Wordle, we're kind of going to show the game that we want to mimic here. So the New York Times actually just uh, purchased Wordle. It's a very simple game. So you try to guess a word. So I'll put in a word here. You just start with any random word. A lot of people have what's called a root word. And it's going to tell you in color code if the word is in the word that you're trying to guess or not. So in this case, everything that's gray means that those letters aren't in the word. But in this case, this is highlighted as yellow. That means the A is actually in the word somewhere, but not the correct location. So I can keep guessing and try to narrow it down. So this is what we're trying to recreate. And if we look at the application, it's actually very simple. So we have... Um, some statistics that we can see. We have some settings that we can configure as far as uh, the theme and the high contrast mode for accessibility, which I love that they included. So we can kind of change up the look and feel. And then we have the help icon here. We can kind of get some instructions on how the game works. So other than that, it's a single page application, very straightforward. And this is what we're trying to recreate. So we need to keep this in mind when we're referencing this slide here, we're talking about the types of power apps that we can create. And there's three main types of power apps that we have. The first is what's called a Canvas application. This is actually a way to give us an application where we have complete control over the user experience and we can start designing every pixel of exactly how we want it. So that's why it's called a Canvas app, is it gives us a blank canvas that we can customize however we want by dragging and dropping different controls and mixing and matching various data sources. And we have nearly 600 data sources that we can use inside of Power Apps right now. So that's everything from Microsoft services like SharePoint and Excel and uh, Azure SQL and all that to third-party services as well, like Salesforce and all that. So that's one type of application. And these apps, these Canvas apps, 
can be used on the mobile device, it can be used on your desktop, tablets, and this is both on iOS and Android devices. Now the other type of app we have is what's called a model-driven app. This, you start with your business data, with your model. So if I wanted to create an application where I can manage my accounts that I have, maybe a CRM type uh, application here, I can use a model-driven app and what it will do is I tell it what data I want to be able to see and edit in the application. I start with that data and it produces an application for me. And the app that it produces is responsive, meaning it will work on my desktop, my tablet, or my mobile device. And it has everything that I need built in with a basic layer of how the design is going to look. So I can have tabular data surfaced up, I can have forms where I input the data and it kind of designs the app for me based off of the data that I want to consume. And the third type of application that we can create is what's called a portal. This is where if you want to be able to have a public facing website, um, this would be a good use case, say, for a portal. So a lot of the COVID vaccination sign-up applications that you might have went to, websites, um, were actually built on Power Apps portals. So it's kind of like a way to build a public website that way, whereas Canvas apps and model-driven apps are more meant for line of business internal applications. So with that in mind, we need to decide, first off, when we're recreating this game, which type of app do we need? Now, in my case, this would make more sense for a Canvas application because I really need complete control over the UI to be able to drag and drop all of those individual objects in. So a Canvas application for this case makes sense because I have the most control over the user experience in the UI. So that's the one we're gonna go with. Now, once we decide that, we have a next layer that we need to decide and that is the form factor. And this is applies specifically to the Canvas application types. So when you choose a Canvas application as an option, we have to choose the form factor. So meaning, what do we wanna optimize this application for? Do we wanna optimize it for tablet or for mobile? Now, when we choose tablet, that means it's going to be a very wide application like what we're seeing here. So that's gonna be really useful for your tablets in landscape mode or your desktop application usage. If we choose mobile, it's going to be in portrait mode and optimize for using it on your mobile device. Now it's important to note too, although we have to originally choose what form factor we want to optimize it for, we can create responsive layouts. And responsive just means it's a technique that you can apply to your applications that optimizes it for whatever form factor you're on. So you build one application, but you change the layout based off of the dimensions of the app, whether it's portrait or landscape, your mobile, or desktop. So we do have that option. Now for the All right. I apologize so much for that. My computer just overheated and <laughs> completely rebooted, so I got back as fast as I could. So if we can get the screen going back up, I will try to pick up where I believe I left off. Glad you could get connected. <laughs> I'm so sorry. <laughs> no worries. Um, if Once you reshare, we'll be able to. Yep, sorry, I thought it, I forgot that I had to reboot, so it wasn't already reshared. Okay. <laughs> All right, everyone. Thank you so much for sticking around. So sorry about the technical difficulties. Um, now, I believe this is where I left off. So we're going to take over from here. And I was talking about form factors. So I think before I close up, this is what I was mentioning of how we need to choose the form factor that we want the application to be optimized for, whether it's tablet or mobile. Um, so I'm going to breeze through this. Um, then the next thing we need to do is decide on the storage. So where we want to store the data for the application. Now, in terms of a word game application, really the only data that we need is a word bank. So a list of words that we can pull from, choose a random word that the user should guess. So for that, that would be a really logical use case for something like Excel that we just pull in the underlying data for because that data isn't going to change. Uh, we could easily get a list of words in a CSV file or something like that, 
pull it in our application and use it. But just know that we have the option to choose from over 500 different data services. So we could have a list of word banks in Azure SQL, SharePoint, whatever data source, uh, Dataverse. Um, okay. <laughs> Third time's a charm, you know? All right, thanks everyone. So I'm going to continue where I left off and we're actually going to open up Power Apps and just start exploring. So if we go to office.com, so we've got our development environment set up. We have access now to Power Apps. So we're going to go click on the waffle and we're going to open up Power Apps. So this is where we can see all the different options that we have for building applications and those three types of apps that I mentioned, the Power Apps, Canvas Apps, Model Driven, and Portal. So if I say a new blank application, here's where we have to make that decision on which type of application we wanna build. So we're gonna create a Canvas application to recreate this word game inside of Power Apps. And when we create that, this is where we have to make that decision on if this application should be the tablet or phone form factor. Now, keep in mind that whichever form factor we choose, we do have the ability to go in after the fact and add in some responsive design so that it will work seamlessly across tablet mobile. And it will actually work in tablet mobile or desktop, no matter which one of these you pick. You just might have to change the orientation of how you're holding your device. So you'll choose that option here, put in an application name, click Create, and that'll open up our blank canvas. Now I'm gonna bypass that piece, and we're gonna go straight into the Wordle application that I have built here. So all you're going to see when you initially load up your application is one blank screen. Now this is the first important thing to remember is how Power Apps are organized, and that is by screens. So if we go back here to the slides, these are things in the Power Apps canvas, and that's what we're in now. This is called the Power Apps Editor. And this is the canvas that we have to edit. So in the Power Apps Editor, a few main things that I want to point out here are the fact that Power Apps are organized, Canvas apps specifically, by screens. And in each screen, we can have multiple screens in an application. That's how you logically group controls. You can have multiple controls in those screens. Up in the upper left-hand side, we have a dropdown. This is called our properties dropdown, where we can, for each control that we have and each object that we add into our Power App, we can define and have all these different properties that we can configure. We also have on the right-hand side, a quick list of properties to configure per each control as well. So this is kind of a shortened list of the properties, whereas on the left-hand side, that's every property that we could configure. And then where we're going to be spending a lot of time here um, in the Wordle application is in the formula bar. This is where we're going to enter in logic. And I'll explain here in a little bit how Power Apps, Canvas Apps handle the logic piece. And then the other things we want to point out here as well is how are we going to add in controls? Well, if we see there's an insert option here in the upper ribbon, and when we click that, we have all of these individual controls that we can add inside of our application. So everything from buttons and labels to complex controls like camera controls and images and signatures and all of that. The other thing, so we we'll wanna make sure that we know where they are is how do we add data sources? Well, that's here in what we call the tree view. And we have this little cylinder icon and that's what allows us to mix and match and add different data sources into our Canvas applications. And then finally, in the upper right hand corner, we have this icon here, and that's where we can go and do some testing and check for errors that we might have in our app. So before we publish anything, we want to make sure that we're looking at this section and addressing any potential issues that the app checkers, what this is called, highlights for us inside of Power Apps. Um, there's a few things to, to know, some different controls that I wanted to point out. Just we have galleries, and what that is is a way to display tabular data. Not gonna be applicable here for our Wordle application. We don't really need that concept, but a very common control that is used inside of Power Apps applications to be able to view a list of data and create sublist. And the same thing for form controls, not gonna use it in this particular application, but if you need to easily be able to enter in data, there's a form control that you simply bind to your data source and it creates all of the different controls for you to be able to fill out and submit that form. Now, let's switch back quickly to the application, and we'll show how we're going to interact and work with some controls here. Um, OK, so if I click out of that, now the main bulk of the application, and now this is a fully functioning version of that Wordle app. So if I put in some kind of text here, like I like using irate for my starter word because it has a lot of the commonly used letters in it. 
Um, I can see that it works. I have the color coding and everything, just like I do in the normal application. So how did I decide how to rebuild this? Well, for comparing it to the normal version of Wordle, really all I need is some kind of placeholder, A, where I can click some kind of button and be able to have that highlight on the keyboard. So I really need to recreate a keyboard that's clickable and then have that go where I can then fill out in some squares uh, the labels and the, the letters that I put in. So when I was thinking of how to do this, you have to think about the requirements. So for this, I don't want users to be able to enter in text. I want to force them to have to click a button and then whatever they click on the button gets displayed here in these boxes. So if we go to insert, this is where we can add in our individual controls. And we'll see that we have all these options, one of them being a label. So that's all that I did here. If you look on the tree view of all the controls that I have inside of this application is I have a ton of labels. So each one of these boxes is actually a label. So that means a user can't enter in text in it, but we can't have text displayed. Um, and then that's how this is all working. And then the keyboard below, if you look at the tree view, you see these are all these button controls. So I have a button for each letter and also an enter button and a backspace button to be able to erase what I've entered. So from a UI perspective, it's really as simple as that. I have some labels and I have some buttons and we can get really complex too with um, the concept of pop-ups and, and SVGs. That's another thing that uh, we can do with Power Apps as well has put in a special image type called a scalable, scalable vector graphic um, inside with the image control here. So if we go to insert again and media, we have a special control called image. And that's what I'm doing with these icons here. So we have out of the box icons that we can use. If we click on the icons button, we have all of these icons built in the Power Apps, which are great. But we just have the ability to extend it even more if we have an icon that's really special and it's not included in any list of icons, we can add in our own. So it's really cool that it's very flexible like that and extendable. So how do the main part of this though, it's really simple to get the interface down. I just added in some labels and some buttons, but the complex piece is how do I do the logic? How do I make it so that A, when I click on a button, it's filling in these labels and it's actually gonna go and check against um, a word that I have randomly selected and see if it matches and all that. Well, to break this down, first thing we need to understand is how am I even getting in the list of words? So that's where we went to the data source tab, like I mentioned earlier. And what I did is I just went out and I found a word bank, a CSV file of over 30,000 five letter words. Yes, there's that many five letter words in the English language here. And I took that file and I went to add data and if we search and add data, these are all the connectors I was talking about, all the different data sources that we can connect to. And we have two different options for Excel if we search for that. We have Excel Online and we have Import from Excel. The important thing to understand between these two options is Excel Online would be directly bound to an Excel workbook stored on OneDrive or SharePoint, whichever one that you're connecting to. So it has a relationship built to that file stored online. So you can write data to it, you can retrieve and kind of use it as a quasi database. Now the import from Excel, that means you're importing in data, static data that won't change. You'd only wanna use this for data that you don't need to write back to and that isn't going to really need to change. Now in my case of these words, I just need to get in the list of words and they're never gonna change. So the import from Excel option was a good approach and that's what I did. I just associated it to that spreadsheet that I have with the list of words and I imported it in and now I can use that inside of my application as you're seeing here. But how do I do all this logic? Well, that's where this formula bar, like I was mentioning earlier, comes into play. Now, before I go into the formula bar, we need to understand how this works. So we have the, there we go. Um, so I thought my computer was crashing it. We have the uh, something called Power FX. And what this is, is the low code language that Power Apps, Canvas Apps use to be able to add logic into your applications. And the cool thing about this is, it's based off of Microsoft Excel. So it's not like having to go out and take a course and you know spend years of your life learning how to uh, do a traditional coding like C-sharp or JavaScript or whatever it might be. 
it's more if you know Excel already and if you know some of the formulas in Excel, like being able to concatenate and left and right and all those basic formulas, then you can start building Power Apps and using those same formulas and um, logic that you have in Excel and apply that to Power Apps. Um, so it makes it really accessible there. Now, how does it actually work? Well, PowerFX is great because it takes care of the fact that it's asynchronous. It takes care of delegation, meaning it knows what to send to the server. It can do projection, and it only retrieves the data that is needed. So these are delegable queries. Um, it has the same syntax, like I mentioned, as Excel. It does type checking. Um, it runs only as needed. Um, it has the same formulas for databases and local tables, and even error handling. So this is an example of what a PowerFX formula would look like. If I wanted to have a simple message that says hello and returns the current user's name, I just can literally type in the text hello in quotes, um, do an ampersand, and use a lookup to look up data from my database and return the name. Now, the JavaScript equivalent of that, as you can see, um, would be fairly complex, but it's a very simple and succinct formula with PowerFX. So again, just another example here of the same PowerFX formula and what it will look like in JavaScript, and in this case, in SQL. Um, so very succinct, very easy to use and get started with formula language um, for building Power Apps. So we need to have a good understanding of PowerFX to build out this Wordle application. So first thing I want to show is the button. So the bulk of part of what I want to do is when I click a button, I want it to be able to surface up here in these labels. So if I take any one of these buttons, like say the E button, you see that if I use my property dropdown, I have a property called on select. This is allowing me to define logic that should occur when I select one of these buttons. And one of the things I'm doing is I'm using PowerFX and I'm using a function on PowerFX called collect. And that's just a way for me to get data and store tabular data locally within my Power App. So I wanna create a collection of letters that have been guessed. So I'm going to take whatever the text is from this button and I'm going to check it against letters that have already been guessed and uh, put that out there into a collection. There's different code that we can do. So with PowerFX, we kind of explained briefly what it does, um, but the concept that I just showed there with the collect is by using uh, variables essentially in collections. So we have different ways that we can track progress and do caching inside of Power Apps. And that's one with global variables. So the scope of these are app wide. So this would be really good if you need to say, get a user's name and you might be using it in multiple spots throughout your application. Um, you can use a function called set, S-E-T, and give your variable a name and pass in some data and use that throughout your app. There's another type of variable called a context variable, and that is limited to a particular screen's scope. So if you needed to have some kind of local variable to where you're only using within a certain screen, um, you could use a function called update context and set the variable that way. And then finally, what I showed you with the collect function uh, is called a collection. Those have app-wide scopes, uh, but they're meant for tabular data. So whereas these variables with the set command and the update context functions, are meant for more uh, singular record data. Uh, collections are meant for tabular data. And there's a few different functions that we can use for that. So there's collect, like you saw me using. There's clear, that's how we empty out the collection. There's clear collect, which basically takes what was in the collection and replaces it with new values. And there's update and remove. And these collections can also be used if you need to do things like caching and offline capability. We can use functions called save data and load data to build in offline functionality. Now, the other thing that we need to understand as far as PowerFX and how code can be executed to do this Word application is a property called the onStart. So this is where we can put in some PowerFX formulas that run when the application is first executed. Now, this is important for our Wordle application because when the user first loads the app, I need to be able to go look out to my word bank and return a random word, and that's gonna be the word that I'm trying to get them to guess. So if we go back to Power Apps and we look at the tree view and click on the app tab here, we see that in the properties pane, we have an option for on start. 
And you'll see that if I expand out our formula bar, I have quite a bit of PowerFX functions going on here. So how do I get um, a random item from my word bank? Well, there's a PowerFX function for that. There's a function called rand between. So that allows me to get a random number. So in my PowerFX, or sorry, in my word bank, I know that I have, in this case, 15,918 words in there to choose from. So I'm telling my rand between function to get a random number from one to 15,918, which is the maximum number of items in that Excel. So it's gonna do that when the application's first loaded and get that number. So now I'm going to look up to my Excel database of the words, and I'm going to find the associated word that matches my random number that I just generated. And that's going to be the word that we're gonna to try to guess here. So once I have that, I'm going to use some collections. These are collections that I'm gonna be storing local data in to be able to tell which words have been guessed and which letters have been guessed. And finally, we're gonna add in all of the words to a collection. So it's gonna take that word that it randomly chose based off of the random uh, number that was selected. And it's going to output each letter in that word to a collection that we'll compare against to tell if the word letter itself is in the right place in the word. So that's really all that we're doing here. Lots of great PowerFX formulas going on and I'll leave you some resources on how to know these formulas. So once we have that, that's really the main logic that we need to build this out. So we're going to um, choose the button or the letter here. And most of the logic is happening on enter. This is where it's actually going to go and check and see, does that word match or not? And is the letters in the right place? So we're gonna use several PowerFX functions here to handle this. And I don't want to get bogged down on the code because this application is available to download and use, but there's lots of good uh, formulas and stuff to learn, um, a good way to see how some of these PowerFX functions work here. Now let's switch back here to the slides real quick. So we talked about OnStar. Um, the other thing we want to talk about, so as you're building out an application like this, you're going to want to know how to debug. Now, if you don't come from a development background, debugging just means trying to figure out if there's any errors and resolve those errors inside of your application. Now, Power Apps makes it really simple to debug because it does things in the formula bar, like be able to tell us the data types that we're working with and even see live previews of some of the data. So if we go back to Power Apps here, for example, and I look up my enter button and some of the code I have going on, you notice that I have some uh, color codes and stuff. I can see real time if I hover over some of these values in the formula bar, like what exactly that value is. So for example, maybe on this E button, if I look at its fill, this is a good example. So that's the color of it. You notice that the color changes based off of if the word is in the word or not, if the letter's in the word. Now you see I have these different color values. Now, do you know what this hashtag F38D4B color is? I know I don't off the top of my head, but if I hover over and click it, the formula bar gives me a live preview of that color. So this is something that you'll wanna use as you're developing Power Apps to check and make sure that your formulas and everything are correct. So really handy to have. Uh, the other thing that's really handy when we're trying to check our applications is the app checker. Now this is what I mentioned earlier. It's this icon here in the upper right hand corner. And if we look, it's going to tell us if there's any issues with your formula. So that's your power FX functions. Uh, runtime errors, meaning when your application is initially loaded, are there any issues? Um, then we also have performance and accessibility. Accessibility is really important to make sure that you're building applications that are usable by everyone. So it's gonna highlight any potential issues. So like I just built this and you see that I have some focus issues. And if you click on it, it takes you right to the section where you need to go and fix that issue, which is really handy. So once you build out your application like this, you run through and you look at the results here of the app checker and see if everything's good. Now you're ready to share it out. So we've looked at the app checker, we resolved that. Now how do we share it and how do we make it discoverable? Well, an important part is to set the app description and icon. So if we go back here and click on settings, 
we'll see that here's where we can put in the description for the application. So you want to make sure you have this filled out so people know what they're opening. The app icon is also important. I created a custom icon for this, and I set that here, as well as the icon fill and background. So you'll want to figure configure those settings there to make sure it's discoverable. And finally, now it's time to publish. And the cool thing about Power Apps is it keeps a version history. So it's in a way similar to documents that we have on OneDrive or SharePoint, where you have a version history of every change that you make. Um, so if you ever something gets messed up, you can always revert back to a previous version and it keeps that history here. Once I'm ready to share this, all I have to do is save it out and we'll have a publish button. So once that's published, this version of my application will be live. And now all that's left to do is we see we have a share icon. And this is where I can share it out to people in my organization. And if we look at some of the sharing settings um, here, you see that right now only I have access, but we can share with individual users. We can share with security groups or even there's a shortcut for everyone if I wanted everyone in my company to be able to use my application. So you can see we can choose rather to send an email invitation and we can share this out and then everyone is able to use my Wordle Power App that we just created. So I know we've had... Um, I think we're about at time here. So what I want to leave with here is some resources on how you can get started with this. Um, if you're new to the Power Platform, this is a Udacity course that I highly recommend that takes you from start to finish how to get started with Power Apps, Canvas Apps, Power Automates, and AI Builder. Um, there's a good learning path on the Canvas user experience for Power Apps that I highly recommend taking. And then the bulk of knowing how to recreate this app is knowing how PowerFX works and what formulas are available. So there's a resource that I provided here on all of the formulas and how they work for PowerFX. And finally, if you want to learn by taking the application that I built and seeing how I did things, I do have it available on the Power Platform PNP Patterns and Practices repo. And there's a short link to download that. So you can just install that in your environment and see how it works. So thank you so much for sticking around and for joining me today. I hope you found this helpful. Um, and I'm going to see if there's any comments quickly in here. So I was trying to get through that. It looks like. Um, I don't, okay, someone asked about the word dictionary. So let me just open that, uh, address that really quickly. Uh, yes, it is open source. Um, I was trying to find that before um, this meeting here. I will try to find that and post it on Twitter, um, the dictionary that I found for this um, and share that out. But I, I think it might be in the instructions on my Power Portal application on the GitHub repo of which word dictionary that I used. So it should be in there but it was open source. So thanks for the question. Um, okay, I think that was the main question that I saw. So um, if that's it, just thank you so much for, for joining and I uh, hope you found it helpful and reach out on Twitter if you have any questions.